So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I manipulate my footage in Premiere Pro to get it to the way I want it to look um, when I do my color grade without using a LUT. This is going to be everything within Premiere Pro. You don't need any external plugins or nothing like that. Any external, you have to buy any LUTs. This is all within the application itself. So let's get right into it. All right, so you guys can see I have my footage right here. This is pretty much what you guys saw in the intro. Um, if I take this off, you can see what the original clip look like. And that's, to me, that's a big change, man. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch so you guys can see the entire process of me doing this entire thing. So I'm gonna delete this right here, delete that. Um, what I do when I do my color grade stuff, um, if you want to make the process a lot faster, especially when you have multiple clips, what I do is I will create an adjustment layer. I'll do it again just to show you guys. So you wanna go here, new item, adjustment layer. Okay, uh, you can name it whatever. I just name it LUT because it makes it easier for myself. So um, I'm just gonna put tutorial. All right, tutorial, we're gonna drag this down. And as you can see, there's nothing on it right now because there's nothing on that actual adjustment layer. So um, if you have like multiple clips, you can just drag it out across the whole thing but since it's just this one um we'll just do it to the end of the clip so yeah once you got that you can pretty much start everything you need to do for your color grade now when you do this make sure you're actually changing the actual adjustment layer not the clip itself because that'll kind of mess you up you can copy it over but just do everything on the adjustment layer that's the whole purpose of the adjustment layer so make sure you are on the adjustment layer. So um, I'm gonna go over the color. Now, if you guys saw in the beginning of the intro, it was kind of like a reddish looking color. Um, I initially wanted to do this like an orange, orange and teal type LUT, um, but I kind of noticed some things. So in a one different route. So this is what I ended up doing. So let's get right into it, man. So the first thing that I do, first off, always, you want to get your tones right and i'll just adjust my shadows my contrast my blacks and whatever else i need to just to get the image looking somewhat like a decent non-flat looking image because this was this was shot in s-log 2 on the sony a6300 obviously you don't have to shoot in s-log 2 to shoot in a log profile and you're going to have the options to pretty much do a lot of things with your colors and posts. Um, yeah, just shoot in a log profile, whatever camera you have. Um, but if you're shooting with the 6300, um, I would say use S-Log2, because I think that's the most cinematic profile that you can use when it comes to posts. Um, make sure you're exposed right, because there has been times where I, I was using this camera and a lot of my footage was like super grainy. And that's because if you are underexposed using this uh, picture profile, you're going to see a lot of grain within your shadows and your black. So shooting an S-Log 2, make sure that you are overexposed. I typically am overexposed by two stops. Um, you guys can see on my Lumetri scopes that this was pretty well exposed, man. Um, it's not too dark right now. The highlights aren't blown. Nothing is blown out. There's no data loss right now. So this is how you kind of want your Lumetri scopes to look, man. You kind of want everything to be within the middle. And then that gives you more room and post to flex and expand those different size of the uh, Lumetri scope. So that's my little pro tip when it comes to shooting an S-Log 2. Make sure you're overexposed because if you're underexposed, unless that's the look you're going for, being underexposed, you're going to run into a lot of issues like I did. Uh, so yeah, don't be like me, man. Just be better than me. Make sure you're exposed properly when shooting an S-Log 2. So um, let's go ahead and adjust some of these things real quick. So you want to go ahead and take the shadows down. As you guys can see, the little metric scopes are dropping. Now, if you notice, if I drop this all the way down to the very end, you notice that this 
doesn't go to the very bottom but if you go to your um, color wheels if you drop the shadows right here all the way down it'll bring that down to zero so so it doesn't really matter um, just make sure you get it to a good point i'm going to adjust my contrast i think that's pretty good right there sometimes i do increase the saturation just a little bit um, not too much. I'm going to go like 120. I don't see now that looks pretty decent. I mean, it looks better than what the original log. See, slight adjustment right there just to get your your correction started, your grade started. All right, so next thing is your curves, man. Adding curves to your footage, your image makes a big difference. I didn't notice this until I started using curves um, or started doing like S curves in my footage you can put three points right here one two three and then what i do now is i'll drop this in right here as you guys can see it's um decreasing those shadows and those blacks so you don't want to go too far because that looks crazy so get it to a point where it looks good and then this is adjusting your whites i think that looks pretty decent right there you don't want to go too far down so if you guys can see what a difference it kind of makes it pop a little bit so um i think it looks pretty good right there before i get into these other things right here i want to go to my color wheels and match and this is where i typically would adjust like to make it look like it's a teal and orange like let so um i typically adjust my shadows for the teal um it's that's really subjective you can do mid-tones or highlights but what i do is um, I just do the shadows and I'll just bring it down to a point where I think it looks somewhat decent. Um, now, don't worry about your skin tones getting messed up because we're going to go back and adjust those. So, um, just worry about how the blues look, how you want, how much you want those shadows to be a little blue. So, this is going to be a working process. So, you're going to be coming back and forth to this area, but for the time being, that looks pretty decent. So, like I said, don't worry about your skin tones because you want to go right through and change those in the S HSL secondary. Um, so what you want to do is pretty much go to this button right here where it says set color, the plus button, and you want to click on points where you see the skin tone. So you can go through and adjust that. As many points as you need, the more points, the better, obviously. So got more colors to pick from. Now you want to go to this color gray and mock that out. And you can see if you need to adjust it to get it on the actual skin, you can do that right there. It won't be super perfect, um, but this will definitely help the color and the, um, and the skin tone. So once you got that, you want to make sure you hit the denoise up a little bit i say about like maybe 15, 16, and also blur it out so those colors kind of blend together well when you go through and adjust it. So maybe 11 or 12, should be pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. So you want to uncheck this right here, and now you can go to this little button right here. I'm going to go down and adjust my shadows. Now it's super like blue right now, so we got to bring that orange color because a lot of your skin tones, a lot of orange and red lies in the skin tone. So we're going to bring that back within the shadows. You can see it's making this way back. You can adjust the bit tones if you need to. That's too orange. And like I said, this is going to be a working process until you get to where you need it to actually be. If you can see what it looked like before until it looks like now, that's a pretty big improvement. Having those mid tones over to the orangey side, that kind of makes it look more natural. That's the thing with skin tones, you don't want to overdo it because it's too much can make it look crazy and not enough can make it look like it's not enough. So um, just kind of be a little subtle with it, with the colors. Um, you don't want it to be too much. And I'll also up the contrast. Pretty good right there. I think that's pretty decent. As you can see at the beginning, and now what we got now so all right so yeah now we got the skin tones to a pretty decent spot um like i said this was initially going to be like a teal and orange 
like luck, but I noticed some things when I was going through at first. So um, we're going to change. I don't like the green in this image. Um, if you guys saw the original video to this song, um, I honestly wish I can go back and re-edit this whole thing because looking at what I can do now with this color and what I had in the actual video, man, it's like night and day. It looks 10 times better when I go through and do it now. Um, but that's just what it is when it comes to growing. You learn certain things and then, you know, you just learn from your mistakes. So we're going to go up to back to your curves. And this is where you can pretty much uh, manipulate and change those colors. So like I said, I don't like this green right here. So we pretty much want to change a lot of this stuff right here. So you can see like if you change something, I'm not going to hit that spot on um, those greens right here. You can take them all the way out. You can bring them all the way up. And I think that looks weird. So, um, so we're going to get it to like that red, reddish looking color. So. Um, you can make different points and if you mess up and need to take a point off you hit command if you use a Mac Hit command you see the minus sign just click It'll take it away Add a point just click so um, this is just with the saturation though So if you want to go ahead and change the um, actual color within the actual color right there, so we got the greens um, You can see You're kind of messing up your skin tone so you kind of want to be careful too when you're doing certain like certain things like this, uh, you don't want to mess up your skin tone. So um, it's good to make multiple points. So when you change something, it just changes that particular area. So this is a work in progress, working process. So um, you just got to work with it. So this is like the color that I want to get to. Um, that's a little too like orangey. I kind of want it to be like almost pinkish looking. So just gotta keep working with it until you get to a, a point where, see like right there, that's what I'm looking for. And if you guys can see, like you see on the line, it gives you the color. You got the or like orange, red, violet, or like pinkish, blue, Lots of purple, um, yellow, green, light blue, then blue. So you can go in and pretty much get it to where you need it to be. Um, this is like the original one I wanted to do with the teal, but the green was just, it was just not working with me. So um, that's why I ended up going with like this color right here. I think it looks a lot better. And like I said, make sure you um, adjust it, but don't adjust the hue that messes up the skin tones. And that pretty much lies in those oranges and red so make sure you make a point and then make it another point so you can adjust the actual background or whatever other color you're trying to adjust so um, you got that right there that looks pretty decent if i want to brighten this up a little bit i can go to the luma make sure you go right here and make that part that first point for your skin tones um now this original color was green so you guys can see it's not going to be like red because that's not the original color this is what you changed it to so make sure you kind of remember the original color, but you should know that the grass was green. So you want to adjust it to make it a little brighter. Make sure you don't do too much. You don't like do overkill because that looks, you can see all those different spots and stuff. That doesn't look good to me. So far you can see what we had in the beginning with the regular S-Log to what we have now. Like that's a big, that's a big change right there. So um, like I said, man, this whole thing, with this, with adjusting the colors, it's a, it's a process. It's a working process, man. So you gotta be patient. Just keep working with it until you get it to where you want it to be. Boom, right there. So I bring that down to like the bluish. Yeah, see, it was just, it just has some weird colors going on, man. Uh, you see that right there? Um, see, and I think the problem was, it's because I was shooting at 120 frames per second and I think the colors are just breaking. See how that, it just doesn't look good. So that's the reason why I changed it to like this color right here instead of that um, actual like orange and teal look. Um, yeah, that's why I ended up going that route. Pretty good right there. Now we're gonna go back to HSL secondary and if you need to make any other adjustments to your skin tones, this is where you can do that. Um, but I think it doesn't look that bad. Now, if you want to kind of adjust 
this color right here within this jacket, what you can do is go to this minus sign right here and just click right here. It might take it a few times to recognize, but if it has nothing to pull from, then because sometimes it may pull that red within the actual other colors as well. See, this is how it would look if everything was like that oranges, like pinkish look. And if you wanted to take that out, you can just hit that negative sign and just click on those shadows and it'll take that right out. So um, I think that looks pretty good right now. Um, I'm gonna go back to my basic corrections and I wanna bring up the highlights. And you can see like on your Lumetri scopes, you can bring it down for your shadows a little bit more. Um, I wanna bring it down within the skin tone. So I'll go right here, pretty good. And so like, that's almost pretty much it, man. Um, you guys can see we went from this all the way to this big difference, man. And you can see like what parts play in the actual look. So if you take out the basic corrections, it looks super faded. If you take off the curves, it takes away that color that you had and it, it kind of takes away that pop within the image. Um, the HSL secondary, your skin tones are all kind of screwed up because we adjusted it from the other part. So yeah, man, a lot of these things play their roles really well. So um, make sure you kind of just work with it. Like I said, it's a working process. Um, nothing's going to be perfect. So. I think it looks good right there. Yo, that looks, that looks good. I, man, honestly, I would keep, I would stay on this for like the next hour, two hours just to get it to like super perfect. But for, for the sake of this video, um, I'm gonna probably close this up here pretty soon. I don't want this to be super extra long. I just wanted to give you guys the basics of how to manipulate and change like certain colors within your footage without using less. If you wanna save money, you can just learn how to Go in Premiere Pro and just manipulate those colors, man. Be like, if you want like a super trippy video, this is perfect for you, man. If you want those purples or pinks to be like super bold, this would be perfect. All right, guys, I'm gonna get up out of here, man. But like I said in my last video, I am gonna be selling my old Sony A6300. So um, this is why I'm giving out like a lot of tutorials right now because I just wanna get back to you guys as much as possible because I know there are a lot of people that still use that camera or that still use that Sony Alpha line. So um, if you use S-Log2, man, this should be a good tutorial for you. Or if not, like if you just wanna learn how to color grade in Premiere Pro, you should still benefit from this as well because this isn't solely just for shooting in S-Log2. This is just really for like all kinds of picture profiles. It doesn't matter what it is. So this should help you when it comes to color grade, but it does help if you do shoot in a log profile because you have more room to change and manipulate colors and post. So um, yeah, that's my little take on that. And that's why I'm giving you guys a lot of tutorials. I'm about to sell my camera. So yeah, man, look, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it to be informational to you, hit that like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out guys.